the kingdom of Srivijaya, which had its capital on the Indonesian island of Sumatra, is considered to have been one of the richest and most magnificent of all the major maritime trade empires in history. Although there are few early records from the region, archaeological evidence shows that the kingdom may have started to come together as early as 200s and was probably a unified political entity by 500. Its capital was located close to what is currently Palembang, Indonesia. We may be confident that the Kingdom of Srivijaya benefited from the thriving Indian Ocean commerce for at least 400 years. From the 7th to the 11th centuries between the Malay Peninsula and the Indonesian Islands. The Malacca Straits were under Srivijaya's dominion. Through these straits, a variety of high-end commodities such as spices, tortoise shell, silk, diamonds, camphor, and tropical woods were transported. The rulers of Srivijaya expanded their realm as far east as Borneo and as far north as what is now Thailand and Cambodia on the Southeast Asian Peninsula using the riches they amassed through transit taxes on these products. The diary of Chinese Buddhist monk Aitzing, who spent six months in the kingdom in 671s, is the first historical source to refer to Srivijaya. He depicts a wealthy well-run civilization that, presumably, had been there for a while. The Srivijayan Kingdom is mentioned in several old Malay inscriptions from the Palembang region, some of which date as far back as 682. The Kajukan Bukit inscription which is the oldest of these inscriptions details the founding of Srivijaya by Dupantahayang Sri Jnanaza with the aid of 20,000 soldiers as his Srivijayan empire grew King Jnanaza went on to subjugate several regional kingdoms including Malayu which fell in 684 after establishing a stronghold on Sumatra Srivijaya moved into Java and the Malay Peninsula in the 9th century gaining control over the Malacca Straits and the authority to impose tolls on their Indian Ocean's maritime silk routes. Srivijaya was able to amass significant wealth and more land thanks to his location at the intersection of the powerful empires of China and India. 
Its influence reached, as far east as, the Philippines, by the 12th century. A large community, of Buddhist monks, who maintained connections, with their fellow believers in Sri Lanka, and the Indian subcontinent, were supported, by Srivijaya's wealth. The Srivijayan capital, developed into a significant hub, of Buddhist knowledge, and thinking. The Saliendra monarchs, of central Java, who commissioned, the construction, of Borobuddha. One of the greatest, and most spectacular instances, of Buddhist monumental architecture, in the world, are an example, of a lesser state, within Srivijaya's sphere, of influence. Srivijaya offered pirates, and other governments, a seductive target Rajendra Kola, of the southern Indian Kola Empire, launched the first of at least 20 years worth of assaults on several of the Srivijayan kingdoms important ports in 1025 after 20 years Srivijaya was able to repel the Kola invasion but the effort had left it more vulnerable with 15 colonies, or tributary nations, under its authority. Srivijaya was regarded, as the richest, and most powerful state, in western Indonesia, by the Chinese scholar, Q.U.Q. as late as 1225. However, the Singhasari Kingdom, had already seized control, of Srivijaya, by 1288. Marco Polo, a well-known Italian adventurer, stopped at Srivijaya, during this turbulent time. From 1291, and 1292. On his way home, from Yuan, China. However, by the year 1400, Srivijaya had vanished entirely, from the map. Despite several attempts, by fugitive princes, to restore it during, the next century. The majority of Sumatran, and Javanese, were converted, to Islam, by the very Indian Ocean traders, who had long been, Srivijaya's source of riches. And this event, proved, to be one, of the key factors, in his downfall.